So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to scoop out the insides. I'm going to take the skin off. I probably would take the skin off first so it's easier to do that. Then cut it in half, scoop the insides out. And then take the bottom piece here and fit it inside so it creates kind of a, a whole piece in a way, but not really, just so that it's a little bit more because this top half is not going to be enough to just make a Wellington out of it. I want to try to use as much of the zucchini as I can. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hassle back it, which is just, you know what hassle backing is? It's just creating some incisions. And then I'm going to dress it with butter. And I'm going to roast it in the oven with the pan just so that it kind of gets a lot of that water off. Take it out, let it cool, and then we'll roll it up into the Wellington. So I think that's how it's going to work today. That's the only way I can think of uh, making this work because these seeds here, I don't want to put in, they're too bitter. So, yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the Wellington with uh, some mushrooms. So I got the mu these mushrooms I'm going to finely chop, make a duck cell with uh, shallots and garlic, and then we'll uh, wrap it with some prosciutto. So that's why it's semi-vegetarian. <laughs> um, and then we're going to wrap it with a pastry. And then as that's baking, I'm going to make a blue cheese bechamel or bechamel blue cheese sauce. So a Mornay, Mornay, Mornay sauce with blue cheese. It's fun. So, so this is the, the zucchini. This is, now you can see why I had to cut, cut it in half because of all these seeds. And so I got to take all these seeds out and figure out a way to merge them together again without this giant hole and then hassle back it and roast it in the oven. So, or I can roast them separately like this, then merge them. Now let's do that. Let's hassle back both and then do that. So I'm using these spacers here to kind of, so when I put the knife down, it hits the top of this thing. And then I have uh, these cuts, incisions, 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 yes. Begun before, but not recent. Since there's not a lot, so that's that's what it looks like. So that's the Hasselback motion. So you can see it's not really cut through all the way to the bottom here. Just leaves a little bit of space and I'm using a very thick one. You can use thinner if you want like a chopstick but because there's not a lot of mass here to hold it all together like in the center there's a lot of stuff missing so I don't want to lose that and it could be when I roast this that it even thins out even more so I'm a little bit nervous about that so. <laughs> Nine months oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry man. It's good. It's good. Thanks, man. Veteran. So that's one hack hassle backed zucchini. Now you can kind of bend it a bit. It's really cool, the Hasselback method, uh, because then you can really get into some creative ways of um, designing your vegetables, I think. I'm really interested in this technique, especially with fibrous uh, materials like this, to see if we could do more with it in the future. So put that on the pan. This is, uh, he got up early enough? Jeez, man. This is uh, some zucchini here, bud. A mature zucchini. This is really big.
this would be easier if I had a food processor, but I don't. So, well, I do, but it's very small. Plus, it's a good practice. So, and I'm streaming, so it's content. Just gonna check uh, the thing. Yep. What do you say? Knife skills? Classic knife cuts? <laughs> no. I nearly shaved off, earlier in the week, I nearly shaved off my knuckle because I was going so fast cutting onions that I'm now like, kind of like holding back. I'm a bit scared now. So yeah, there's that skill. Because the, at work they sharpened the knives and they didn't tell me. So they were like extra sharp. <laughs> they, just catch, they just caught me a little bit and that's it. And I was like, okay, we're done. The technical terms right here, buddy. All right, I think this is pretty well chopped up to where I need it to be. Let's do one more pass. So if you're looking for like the recipe of what I'm doing, there's actually no recipe that I could find for this, but Generally for me, I don't do, like when I do savory cooking, I'm not really doing a recipe. I'm more doing um, what I see and then kind of use it for inspiration. But what was interesting was this particular guy on YouTube had done a beef wellington and he did something that I've never seen before, which is he wrapped the, the beef in crepes first before he wrapped it in the um, prosciutto which was kind of interesting. So I was really, yeah, kind of inspired by that and I kind of wanted to know more and whether that could work for me because he said that the crepes were being used to help absorb some of the water. So we'll put some salt on there. Kind of help get some of that water out through osmosis. Oh yeah, there was another, oh yeah, I was gonna put um, balsamic vinaigrette in there, or balsamic uh, vin, because I wanted to get a little bit of the color, but also the acid as well. Just as a, like an added bonus of flavor. A little bit of vinegar goes a long way, guys, when you're making dishes because it's not a way to make it too acidic. It's helped to bring out some of those flavors and make it a bit more fresh. No, courgette. It's courgette. This is the uh, zucchini here. It's zucchini or courgette, depending where you're from. Pancakes, these are crepes. They're going to be used to rip. Crepes are, don't contain any um, baking powder or soda. It's just a flat pancake.
That one looks a lot better than the first one. Does that work? No. Kind of works, but not really. See, I want to try to fill in this gap here. So what I'll do is I'm going to put this like here, and then I'm going to cut this part off here, and then fit it into itself here so that it's... So I'm going to use serrated blade. I'm just going to cut this. I'm going to do that. How's that look? That's kind of good, yeah? Okay, so I got the crepes. Let's get the prosciutto. Prosciutto wrapped zucchini. Sounds delicious. Okay. Then we put on the duck cell. It's a bit dark. I'll brighten that up for you guys. There we go. All right, the moment of truth. Just put the zucchini on there, like so, and then you wrap it. So I'm gonna make sure to get some of this plastic up here. Oh no, it fell. <laughs> it's massive. How does it look in there? It's good.
Okay, so there's a bit of leakage, just fine. What I'm gonna do is wrap the other ends with the plastic wrap and then I'm gonna really tighten it. Because this plastic wrap is not long enough as I thought. Because I need to have this tight in order to keep everything contained. And because it's such a cumbersome uh, format, that or uh, shape makes it a bit difficult to uh, to wrap it properly. So that's the key. You want to get it as tight as you can with the, the plastic wrap so you're able to kind of keep everything compact. So that's what you want, like this. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to put it in the fridge to kind of rest a little bit and to kind of set up. I don't want to put it in there. I'll put it on the top. Get my blue cheese. So I'm just making a simple roux. And then on the side, I'm also heating up my milk uh, so that when I pour it in, it doesn't, uh, create too, doesn't create lumps. Okay, now we're going to add the uh, milk in. Or was it too fast?
So that's it. That's how you make a bechamel. Good way to test is just in terms of consistency, it's not runny. You just have a line like this, and that's how you know it's cooked. The, the good right consistency. And then what we're going to do is add the, just going to keep that warm a little bit. Can wipe my station up a bit here. So we're going to add the Stilton cheese, the blue cheese, and we're going to just add it piece by piece and just stir it in. Just let the heat gradually melt it. I haven't put any salt in here yet because it's this cheese is very salty, so I don't want to. I want to use the cheese as a way to season it and add a bit of flavor. So it's very. It just takes a bit of time. Sauce looks good so far. Thank you. I haven't tasted it yet, so we'll see how, how it tastes. Get the big chunks of blue cheese in there. Hey, hello? Okay, let's give it a, a little bit of a taste. More cheese. There's not enough cheese in there. I'm going to add a little bit more milk. Uh, in this case, I'm going to add heavy cream. I wanted it a little bit thin because this sauce is going to be sitting out for a little while, so it's going to thicken up over time. So I'm just increasing the heat a bit here. I don't want it to boil. I want it to just the residual heat to gradually cook or gradually melt the, uh, the cheese. So it's already starting to do that. All right, we'll just put all this in, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll then I'll add some salt if I need to. It doesn't hurt. I really like blue cheese, so it was a taste I, I acquired over time. So this is how to make a blue cheese sauce, basic, fresh, very simple. Just 25 grams of flour, 25 grams of butter. You melt the butter, mix in the flour and the butter together until you get a nice roux. And then you cook that roux a little bit further so that it, that flour smell slash taste goes away. So I'm going to get the puff pastry. I just bought some puff pastry. I didn't make some myself. I just didn't have the time. So I just bought some store bought. Usually it's safer that way just so you know consistent, you have consistent results.
Okay. Let's put the zucchini on. A roll, a zucchini roll. So that's the zucchini roll that's been chilled in the fridge. I'm going to have this side up. So I'm trying to get the plastic wrap direction. <laughs> Where's the end? Hello? There you go. Okay. Okay, here we go. We're gonna roll it and then we're gonna get it ready for to bake. Okay, so now I've rolled it once. I'm just gonna trim this top half here off. I'm either gonna roll it back over onto itself and then like that. It's a heart loaf. Okay, so now I'm just gonna dress it with some more egg yolk.
All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt on there. All right, let's put this bad boy in the oven at 205 degrees Celsius. So. Ow, ow. All right. <laughs> she thinks I have food in there, but I don't. Hey, hey. Hey, look, look, you're on camera. Look, you're on camera, look. See? No, don't go there. Are you gonna wake the, walk the tight tight rope? Go, walk it. Walk the tight rope. Puppy, go. Go. Lee. This is the way I entertain people. <laughs> there we go. Here. Dance. Look, it's your friends. Look, it's your friends. Hey, look at. <laughs> What's up, clone? How you doing, man? Thanks for the raid of eight viewers. Sweet. Welcome, guys, to Food Experiment, where today's experiment is about food, making a zucchini wellington. My name is Mr. Ed. There it is. A baby. <laughs> That's a zucchini. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that looks awesome. Let's go to the close up DSLR so you guys can see that a bit better. Don't have to look at my ugly face. Looks tasty, huh? Gonna let it rest just a little bit. And then we'll take it up. I'll put it on the cutting board. We'll slice it. Let's cut the end off just to see what it looks like in the inside. And then we'll go from there. Oh, man. You're gonna be so... That's what it looks like. That's a zucchini. How does that look? Shoot your favorite emotes there, guys. That looks delicious. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm gonna cut a big piece here. Well, I say that came out damn good. Right?
Hold on. Yeah, I made the dressing from the the sauce is a uh, bechamel sauce. It's a bechamel sauce, uh, white sauce with um, just you take uh, butter and uh, melt it, and then you mix it with some flour. So 25 grams of, of butter, 25 grams of flour, melt it, make a roux, and then uh, mixing together, you cook up that flour taste, and then you add in 300 milliliters of milk, whisking it in. And then I added uh, blue cheese, uh, Stilton blue cheese uh, chunks inside. And that's how I made a besham, uh, this uh, blue cheese sauce. So, uh, so you can see like, in the, if you watch earlier the stream guys, uh, what I did with the zucchini. So the zucchini was essentially like this big. And then in the center was the seeds and the pulp and everything. I cut it in half. So I had two halves, scooped out the insides. And then I hassle back both, uh, roasted them in the oven. I first brushed them with butter and then roasted them in the oven, took them out, let it cool, and then I took one piece and I flipped it inside, turned the other one upside down into it, and then I squared it off and took that piece and put it in. So that's the kind of piece that I have there. So that's why it looks like a three-tier. Um, because if I were to use, um, there could be a way that I could grow a zucchini where it's a little bit more uh, larger than what you buy in the store and then it doesn't have that seed part in the center. Then you can make it a round uh, beef wellington so that it's not, as, it's not as big as this one, but it still um, has that continuous or uh, consistent structure throughout so it's not too uh, awkward. Because you can see here, because of the awkward shape, it created this kind of like uh, fold right here, this gap. And this could, luckily for us, the whole, the whole thing worked out, but in this case here, this could actually be in a trap for water where it can then collect and then create a sogginess point. But in this case, the whole thing worked just by managing the amount of water in the system. Um, so yeah, and then the duck cell on the top, you can see it's not all the way around. So if it was a, also a round, uh, rounded uh, zucchini, then we would have a nice coating of duck cell uh, mushrooms all around the uh, outside, but in this case, no. So it's not very uh, even uh, in that case. But it's a learning nonetheless, I think. In any case, the way that we've made this happen really worked really well for a first time. Um, the crust, as you can see, is dry. It's not wet at all. Could be as well because of the zucchini being um, old, or not old, but mature. So there's not a lot of water in itself, uh, which is a good. So, but overall, it works really well. So I'm really happy with this.